praise the Lord. Let's stand this morning. Let's turn to Psalm 24. It's good to be in the house of the Lord.
to be praised. Hallelujah. Come on, sing it again. Say, you are Alpha. Hallelujah. And Omega. Well, we worship you, our Lord, for you are worthy to be praised. Oh, we give you all the glory. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. Come on, you are Alpha and Omega. Yes, you are Alpha. Hallelujah. Oh, and Omega. Yeah, we worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. And Omega, you are Alpha, Hallelujah, and Omega. Well, we worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. Say, say we give you all, all the glory. We worship you. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. Come on, lift your voice. Hallelujah. We give you all the glory. Say we give Alpha and Omega. Oh, now you are Alpha. Thank you, Jesus. And Omega. Oh, we worship you, our Lord, for you are worthy to praise you are alpha and omega hallelujah oh you are alpha yeah. omega hallelujah oh we worship you our lord oh you are worthy to one more time. You are Alpha and Omega. You are Alpha. Oh, you are Alpha. Oh, and Omega. Yeah. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to Somebody worship him this morning. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. 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 How many need the Lord this morning? I need him now more than I ever needed him before. Hallelujah. your Lord right now. Hallelujah. So I lift my hands. I bow my knees. I worship at your throne. I need you, Lord. I need you right now. Come on, let's sing it again. Yes, I need you, Lord, right now. Oh, say I need you, Lord. Yes, I need you, Lord, right now. I lift my hands. Oh, I lift my hands. Bow my knees. I bow my knees. I worship that your throne because I need you Lord hallelujah I need you Lord I need you right now come on sing it again I need you Lord I need you Lord say I need you Lord yes I need you Lord right now yes I need you Lord Tell him again, I need you, Lord. Yes, I do, God. Say, I need you, Lord. Oh, I need you, Lord. Right now. Hallelujah. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. Oh, right now. Hallelujah. Yes, I lift my hand.
you need him this morning. Can't make it without him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Amen, amen, amen. Let's turn around and greet your brothers and sisters. Say so good to see you this morning in the house of the Lord.
come on, sing it again. Oh, now everywhere I look, your love is. Hey, everywhere I look, your love is. Oh, say everywhere I look, your love is. Hallelujah, everywhere I look, your love is. Hey, say all around. I said, all around, all around, everywhere, oh, all around, all around, everywhere, everywhere I look, your love is all around. Somebody give him praise in this place. Jesus. Everywhere I look, his love is all around. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. You can be seated in his presence, amen, on today. Glory, 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 glory. I was, I think I went back to some old uh, service that we had here and heard that song. I said, man, we ain't sung that one in a long time. Amen. Everywhere I look, his love is all around. Amen. I um, want to just uh, call for some of our specials, amen, here today, and, and those that I sent out the list to last night, you all please forgive me, I had made the schedule a couple weeks ago, and I thought for sure I had sent it out, and I realized last night my daughter told me I never sent it out, so you all forgive me, and I know that I caught some of you all off guard, you just got it last night, and I'm supposed to be singing today, so I do apologize for that, amen. Just work with what we have. Amen. I, I got a man, um, uh, Brother Troy and Sister Shonda, a man on the list. I know Sister Sharice is not feeling well, so we won't call her today. Uh, but Brother Troy, Sister Shonda, you all ready to sing? Brother Troy, you come first. Amen. And then Sister Shonda will let you come after that. Amen. Amen. And, and, and while, I, while I'm at it, I'll ask this. If I got anybody here today to say, I had a song in my heart and I was waiting to sing it sing today in Sister Sharice's place, amen, I'll let you do that, but just let me know if you if you that person that I had this song in my heart and I really wanted to sing it, amen, praise the Lord, Brother Troy's going to come at this time, amen. song said everywhere I see his love is all around. Amen. Amen. Y'all pray for me. I have journeyed through the long dark night. By faith alone, through sight unknown, and yet his eyes is watching.
Lord. The anchor holds in spite of the storm. Amen, 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 amen. Certainly appreciate uh, that, that song from um, Brother Troy. Amen. And just sometimes there's songs that just kind of carry you through different seasons of your life. And I remember that song coming along and, amen, just being a real blessing to me. And no matter what I'm going through, I know the anchor holds. Just, I mean, my boat ain't going nowhere. To just last through this storm, but I ain't going nowhere. I'm gonna be right here when the storm is over. This too shall pass. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Amen. Praise the Lord, uh, Sister Shonda. Let's have you, amen, at this time. Come and just give us a song. Praise the Lord.
God's not done. Writing your story, he's not done. Amen. Praise the Lord, appreciate that, uh, Sister Shonda. Amen. My, let's uh, prepare, amen, for this morning's offering. Uh, we'll uh, give you a few announcements. We don't have any prayer requests or praise reports amen, this morning. So I think it'll be a blessing to your spirit, especially the one that we'll have here right in Florida. Uh, we want to do all we can to support Brother Smiley, amen, in those meetings. And I think it'll be a real blessing, not only to us, but also to the church there in um, uh, in Okeechobee. Uh, so keep those meetings in prayer, amen. It's like every weekend I think something's going on. And uh, the last weekend of that month of October, I'm supposed to be with Brother um, Amen. In Iowa, something I've been working on with him for quite some time. He and I've been preaching together out in in uh, Arizona for the last two years. And he's been like, Brother Jack, when are you gonna come to Iowa? When are you gonna? Come? I say, as long as it's not cold when I come, I'll be glad to come. And uh, so we finally worked it out, and I'll be going there the last weekend, Amen, of the month. So. Uh, tell you the next two months are going to be quite busy with a lot of events uh, that are coming up but uh, we're certainly looking forward to it uh, i know coming up in november brother jerry will be getting married amen and, and we're certainly excited about that and, and uh, i told him put me on the list i do plan to go to haiti and um and be there to just support amen, brother jerry so and sister melissa so keep that keep these things in prayer much much is happening but uh, thank God for uh, his grace. I want to uh, thank the Lord today for Mr. Charlie Ware. Amen. Being with us. Amen. This is Sister Vernon's brother. And uh, uh, so he, he came. I remember him yesterday. And, 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 and Mr. Ware, we do offer our condolences to you and your family and the loss of your father. Uh, but we're so happy to have you, amen, in fellowship with us on today. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, brothers, at this time, let's uh, take to today's offering. Amen. And we'll go from there.
Hallelujah. How many want the word of God to speak? Let the word of God speak to us this morning. Blessed be his holy name. Amen. Praise the Lord. We thank God for Sister Cecily. Amen. The baby this morning. Uh, being with us. Amen. Her service. Amen. So good to, to have, have her. Amen. Thank God for bringing her through the labor. Amen. Thank God for bringing her through. We certainly appreciate. Amen. The Lord Jesus. Amen. Let's just stand to our feet. Amen. On this morning. Thank you, musicians. I certainly appreciate you all. Amen. Uh, very, very grateful uh, for how God has blessed Spirit of Truth. Amen. He's been real good to us throughout the years. Amen, and uh, just 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 appreciate all of our, all the help that God has given uh, the church. Uh, I want to, man, just uh, read a couple scriptures. If you all just bear with me, uh, we will go back to uh, our uh, scripture out of Second Peter uh, chapter one, as we have been making our journey through uh, war strategies and. Uh, we're going to pick up a, a different angle. We preached uh, War Strategies Patience with God uh, last time, amen, we were together. And this morning, I want to use the subject War Strategies Patience with each other, amen, patience with each other. One is to have patience with God, uh, but another is to have patience with each other. Uh, so we want to uh, minister on that this morning. And just uh, for our foundation of scriptures here, Second uh, Peter chapter 1, starting at verse 4, uh, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Uh, and beside this, given all diligence, add to your faith the virtue and to virtue knowledge and to knowledge temperance and to temperance patience and this is what we're focusing on amen here today uh, patience uh, glory to God uh, uh, and to patience godliness to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness charity but if these things be in you and abound they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ but he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off, uh, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore, the brother, brethren, give diligence to make your call in an election sure, for if you do these things, you shall never fall. Turn with me also over to Genesis chapter 14. Amen. And uh, I forgot to mention to you all, I had an opportunity to talk with Brother Robles uh, this week, and he told me to make sure uh, that I, I let the church uh, know that he sent his greetings to you all. Amen. Also, Brother um, Brother Walker, amen, also sent his greetings to the church here. Amen. Genesis 14, and, and, and we're using uh, the platform of uh, the, the statue of a perfect man because this is what God has uh, given to us as believers, amen. Um, this is what brings us to a place of perfection. This is what gives us overcoming power. These are things that we should be striving for uh, daily and, uh, you know, just constantly, constantly, you know, just striving just to look more like Jesus. Uh, but I'm using it as a platform and then I'm going back and showing a man maybe in the Old Testament where uh, this was applied, a man, a, a war strategy was applied. Uh, but we'll need these war strategies, to, war strategies to overcome the enemy in our daily walk. So here, Genesis 14, uh, verse one says, and it came to pass in the days of uh, Amraphel, king of Shinar, Arioch, king of uh, Elisar, uh, Ch Ch Chedorlaomer, uh, king of Elam, and Tidal, king of nations, that these made war with Bera, king of Sodom, and with Bersha, king of Gomorrah, Shinab, king of Adma, and Shemeber, king of Z Zeboam, and the king of Bela, which is Zoar. All these were joined together in the Vale of Siddim, uh, which is the Salt Sea. Uh, Twelve years they served um, uh, Chedorlaomer, and in the third, in the thirteenth year they rebelled, 
And in the 14th year came General Lomer and the kings that were with him and smote the Raphaim and Ashtaroth, uh, Karnaim and Zuzim and Ham and the Emims and Sheva, uh, Kiriathim and the Horites in their Mount uh, in their Mount Seir unto El Paran, uh, which is by the wilderness. And they returned and came to En Mishpat, en Mishpat uh, which is Kadesh, and smote all the country of the Amalekites and also the Amorites uh, that dwell in uh, Hazen, Hay, Hazen Tamar. And there went out the king of Sodom, and the king of Gomorrah, and the king of Adma, and the king of Zeboim, and the king of Bela, the same as Zoar. And they joined battle with them in the vale of Sidim, with Chedorlaomer, uh, the king of Elam, and with title king of nations, and uh, Amraphel, king of Shinar, and Ariok, king of Elisar, four kings with five. Uh, and the vale of Sidim was full of slime pits, and the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah fled and fell there, and they that remained fled to the mountain. And they took all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah and all their victuals, and went their way. And they took Lot, Abram's brother's son, who dwelt in Sodom and his goods, and departed. Amen. Uh, and there came one that had escaped and told Abram, uh, the Hebrew, for he dwelt in the plain of Mamre, the Amorite, brother of Eshcol, and brother of uh, Aner. And, uh, and these were confederate with Abram. And when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his trained servants, born in his own house, 318, and pursued them unto Dan. And he divided himself against them, and he and his servants by night, and smote them and pursued them unto Hobah, which is on the left hand of, uh, of Damascus. And he brought back all the goods, and also brought again his brother Lot and his goods, and the women also, and the people. Amen. Let's uh, pray. Father, we thank you, O God, for the ability to read the word of God. May the Holy Spirit come now upon the word, and uh, Lord, just uh, give us a understanding, uh, quicken to us, Lord, the things that would draw us closer to you. Thank you for each and every heart that has come, Lord, to hear the word of God today. Bless uh, those that were not able to be a part of the service. We want to remember the, the, the Johnsons as they're traveling, uh, God, and uh, there to Denver this weekend. Just be with them, O oh God, and uh, I believe Brother Caleb is also with them, so be with them, O oh God, and uh, just watch over them, let them all arrive and, and return back home safely uh, is our prayer. Get glory uh, out of all that is done in this service today. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Uh, you can be seated. Praise the Lord. Uh, again, we want to use the subject war strategies and um, patience with each other. Uh, that is our uh, title for today. Amen. In the uh, Statue of a Perfect Man, uh, Brother Branham uh, tells us about these two, he, he speaks on two different types of patience. He talks about patience with God, and then he also talks about patience with uh, one another. And, you know, just a, 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 a brief, um, I want to read a quote that we read at the end of Patience with God, just to kind of hit that again. Uh, he, he hits seven different uh, examples in scripture about patience with God. One was Abraham, how he had patience with God. Uh, Noah and how he had patience with God. Uh, Moses had patience with God. And I believe he said with Moses, said, when you've done uh, what you know God has told you to do, then just stand still and be patient. Amen. When you've done everything that God told you to do, just stand, stand still and be patient. Don't worry about it. Uh, God will take care of everything else. Right. Amen. Sometimes we find ourselves fighting, trying to prove ourselves. No, stand still and be patient. Right. God will vindicate you. Let me tell you, when God vindicates you, that's better than you vindicating yourself. Amen. So he's, he used Moses. He used the Hebrew boys. He used Daniel. He used Paul. And, and, and I love the story of Paul uh, because as the Lord was it was showing me that I came out and I preached it and I said you could be in the midst of Eurokinon and still in the perfect will of God. 
Amen. We come out and see that one Sunday. And the next Sunday, we didn't have Euro Clyde on it. They had a different name it was called Dorian. Amen. But we was in the midst of Dorian and still in the perfect will of God. Hallelujah. Yeah, you can go on to Indiana, still in the perfect will of God. Even though Dorian's bearing down on you, you can still be in the perfect will of God, facing a tempestuous storm. Glory to God. You, you got to know who you are in Christ. And, 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 and I'm going to tell you, it requires some patience. Amen. For me to go in and, and my family stuck here, I had to have patience and just wait on the Lord. God did some God did some miracles for us, y'all. Amen. I, I I might as well since I'm here, I might as well just share it. I'm gonna get into the, to my subject, but you know we had, we had um, three uh, two flights cancel on us. We were trying to come back home, and, and and one of our flights canceled. I think on Friday night. Like Lord, what are we gonna do? So we got up the next morning, figured out a plan, and then we we got on got on board with Delta, and Delta was gonna bring us home. We said, okay, it's all worked out. Let's go on and keep preaching, and uh, and, and and we get to the last service preaching the gospel and the last service comes up and uh and after the last service everybody said hey, man i'm i'm talking about the church let out a great shout i mean I, I it was it was you know i, I say i say joshua told them to shout they they required patience they couldn't talk as they walked around the malls of the walls of jericho but when they let out that shout god brought the walls down i say on the count of three let out a shout i counted the three and the whole church erupted us that was that was that was some church <laughs> You know, and right after we had this great shout, we get a text or an email saying your flight was just canceled. I said, Lord, we supposed to fly out in the morning, you know. And uh, so we, we like, OK, how are we going to do this? And, you know, we're trying to work through some things. And and uh, and finally, you know, we come together. Amen. That Monday morning uh, and, and, and we got everybody, you know, all situated and we called and we found out that they were still flying to Miami. They weren't flying to Fort Lauderdale. And they weren't flying to uh, 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 to West Palm, but they were flying to Miami. And we had already paid, I think, a couple hundred dollars for the, the change in the other flight, but to fly to Miami, it was going to be $500. You know, we called Delta on the phone and said, well, we want to just get off this flight that's going to Fort Lauderdale. A lot of them been canceled. Please reroute us to Miami. They say, okay, we'll do it, and they did it for free. Hallelujah. <laughs> right? So I said, God is working. $500 just got erased. Went, 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 no, I mean, went to nowhere land. I'm like, okay, thank you, Lord. I see you moving, right? So I jumped on, we jumped on that plane and said, they, I think we, we, we was on the phone with Delta at 10 in the morning. The flight was leaving at 1248. They said, can you get that? I said, yes, we can. And they went running up the stairs, getting all their stuff together, running back out the, out the hotel. We trying to run to the airport and we made it there just in time. Come to find out that was the last flight that was coming to Miami. God put us on the last flight. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory. They told us to expect turbulence. And, by, and, and the worst thing I felt is when the plane was landing. God protected us on the plane. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Out, out, of the, out, of the, out of the wind of the plane, they're pointing out, there go the storm right over there. Y'all can see it out, right out the wind. I say, Lord, and here we come landing right on the other side of that. I, now, I, 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 I'm, I'm certainly, um, I, 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 see, how do I, I, I want to say this the right way. I certainly feel for the people in the Bahamas. Amen. I feel very, very, uh, I feel bad. I wish, I wish some of us could have been there to welcome some of them yesterday. Amen. Here to South Florida. With a, with a, if you need a church. <laughs> I know your church, your church has been wiped out, but if you need a church, hallelujah, here's somewhere you can come, right? I wish we could have been there in Miami doing something like that. I mean, when they, when they come in yesterday, but, but, but while, you know, Bahamas was certainly suffering, I, I do say God was holding things up to allow our plane to get right in. And when that plane got in, we, we thought it was going to be uh, very terrible conditions, but it was so calm in Miami and so calm in Fort Lauderdale. Our cars were parked in the Fort Lauderdale airport, and we're like, how are we going to get the cars out? They have told us not to even show up at the airport because we're not going to let you on the property. And as I'm driving by the airport, I say, I got to try. I say, you know, my car's in there, and I, I don't want to have to come back down here. Lord, just give us favor. We, we drove right on up on the airport, and we got there, and right where the police was stopping everybody, the man walked up to my car and said, are you here to get your car, sir? I say, yes, sir. He say, follow this officer right on in, and he'll take you there to get your car. Yeah. I say, glory to God. <laughs> And we come right on home with no problems. And then the next day, no storm. I'm talking about God is good. 
God is good. Just skate, just skated our coast, right? So I, I just believe God did that because we did something for him. I, I'm crazy enough to believe that. I told people, amen, there in uh, Indiana, I say, the re I mean, Paul, the people that was on the boat with, uh, uh, with Paul, they were spared because Paul was on the boat. Huh? They were spared because Paul was on the boat. So I, 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 I'm crazy enough to believe that South Florida could, could have been spared from Miami all the way up to West Palm Beach because we had to get home. I'm crazy enough to believe that. Hallelujah. Now that don't, that don't mean that every storm gonna pass us. Hallelujah. <laughs> God did. God showed us favor for that moment, but there's going to be some storms coming because judgment is striking the land. Sometimes I hate to say this, the only way God can get people's attention. Amen. When judge, when when these acts of judgment come, because you 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 can't even explain how a storm like this just just come out of nowhere. They got another one out there right now. Hallelujah. Amen. And everywhere we turn, it's just judgment, judgment, judgment. Somebody ought to get serious about God. All right. Yeah. Amen. So, you know, I thank God for that. But but you can be in the midst of your Clydon and still be in the will of God. Uh, Brother Branham also talked about the believers on the day of Pentecost. Amen. And how, um, you know, they were patient waiting on the Lord. But today we want to pick up uh, uh, another, amen, example of this patience, patience with each other. Let me read a, a couple statements here. Amen. A quote or so from Statue of a Perfect Man. I'm starting at paragraph 275. Glory to God. Stay with me. It says, we should have patience uh, with one another, too. See? He says, one time we, we get so much impatient with one another. I love the statement. We get so much impatient with one another, we think we got to be like Moses. Moses had patience with the people. Look, that's what caused them not to go over. See, if you're trying to do something, like I've tried to get this message over at the tabernacle to see that each member of the tabernacle become this. And he's talking about the statue of a perfect man. Become this. Amen. It's hard to do. I tried to have patience. This is 33 years. See, have patience. Women still bob their hair, still just the same, but just have patience. Just See, just have patience. Wait, have to. If you ain't got it, don't try to build on this down here. Have patience. Oh, my. I know what that's like, you know, uh, Brother Branham being a, a, a pastor and, 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 and shepherding the people. And you come and you bring a certain truth to the people. And, but everybody keep going on doing the same thing. Everybody, and you don't know it, how, how much it, it requires patience not to say nothing. Amen. Not that you don't see it. You see it all, but it requires patience. Oh, my God. Amen. Amen. I, I, I'm a, it's something that I, I'll share. I wasn't thinking about sharing this, but it just came to my spirit. And it's something that I appreciate. I won't I won't I won't I won't say who it is, but I'll, I'll say this. Uh, I was helped. I was helped at at, a, at at the younger stage of my ministry. Amen. When I first started out, uh, I remember. Amen. A sister just showed me a scripture. All she did, I love the way she did it. She just showed me the scripture. And the scripture said, the wrath of man does not work the righteousness of God. And when I read that scripture, I said, whoo, whoo. I said, yes, Lord. That ain't and it just showed me, see, you got to have patience with God's people, right? Don't come out attacking everybody just because it ain't done the way that you want it done. Just preach the word and God will take care of the rest of it, right? Just have patience with God, people. Oh, amen, somebody. I learned that lesson a long time ago because, you know, I mean, you can come out, a minister can get something in his spirit and just kind of carry that thing. And he actually end up preaching to, you know, the one person that ain't doing right and forgetting about the 99 that's doing right. Right. The one you preach to the one that's wrong and forget about the 99 that's doing right. So the 99 that's, get, that's doing right are not being edified. All right. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And you just chasing. And how do you know whether you're chasing a goat or a sheep? Because they both blade the same. Amen. You don't know what you're chasing. Just preach the word. I, I ain't got to go out my way. You know what's right and wrong. Right? And, and when the Holy Spirit wanted to be said, he'll say it. Glory to God. He'll say it. If you're cutting your hand, shouldn't be cutting, he'll say it. If you're putting on makeup and shouldn't, shouldn't be putting on makeup, he'll say it. If your skirt too short, he'll say it. All right. 
Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. The Holy Ghost know exactly when to say what he want to say. You know what's right and you know what's wrong. But as a pastor, I got to be patient. Amen. Amen. Because somebody ain't struggling with makeup. So I can't preach the makeup sermon every week. Hello, somebody. Somebody, somebody not overcame that thing. And they trying to go deeper in God. Hallelujah, somebody. But we got to learn to be patient with one another. Brother Branham say what impatient, I mean, he say, he say we're, 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 we're so impatient, amen, uh, he says we got so much impatience. I said, well, now, the word impatience means to be quickly irritated or provoke. Quickly irritated, right? I mean, you can't allow yourself to get quickly irritated. Now, you know, I mean, like, like what, what is the, 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 the Peter asked Jesus, how many times should I forgive my brother? Seven times? And he thought he had something. Seven times, is that enough? Jesus said seven times 70. Hallelujah. 490 times. So that requires patience. Oh, hallelujah. We, we need that. This is where God is trying to take us to. We can't be quickly irritated and easily provoked. Come on, somebody. Not, 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 not with your brother and sister. Amen. Actually, not even out there in the streets. As, as Christians, we should be the example. Hallelujah. Amen. We shouldn't be the ones in the arguments. Come on, church. We shouldn't be the ones. Amen. I, I just got to say something. Why, why you as a Christian got to be the one to say something? Why can't you as a Christian just close it up and say nothing? Commit it to God. Huh? I mean, it's all kind of situations come up. No, 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 I'm just going to let. No, be patient with others. Hallelujah. Praise God. I thank God for that. Amen. So, so he said we're, 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 um, we get so impatient with one another. And I'm just, you know, let me just preach this morning. Y'all just let me preach. This, 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 this show happens in, in, in families. Parents impatient with the kids. Kids impatient with the parents. Uh, husband impatient with the wife. Wife impatient with the husband. Huh? And we just have all kind of, tr you know, if we practice patience, it would be less arguments on the way to church. Huh? And I'm not, you know, oh, glory to God. Let me just say, it, say this too. You know, in order to avoid an argument don't mean you have to drive in separate cars. Huh? Amen. You ought to be able to come together to church without arguing. Because you know, you already know that the devil like to use that time. So it might be a good time not to even talk about anything that could, cre could create an argument. Right. Hallelujah. You got to recognize the devil when he's coming. Come on, church. Amen. All right, all right, all right. We got to learn to be patient with one another. Some things you just put in the parking lot say we'll talk about that later. All right, all right. Let me go on. Uh, so, you know, the, 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 let, me, let me read a quote here. Questions and answers, part three. Got to learn to be patient with one another. Amen. The prophet says this. This is a question that comes to him. He says, Brother Branham, how am I supposed to show my wife that I really care for her and yet stay with the word? Uh, say that's that stay with the word but still having a question like this said why don't you practice what you preach or believe so his wife is always telling him why don't you just practice what you preach so the husband is like how do I show my wife that I really care for her and yet stay with the word because you know as a husband I got the I got to put my foot down you know this is the word of God you know that's the way we are as husbands right you know but but here the, the, the question is asked how do I how do I do this because my wife is telling me why don't you practice what you preach Oh, hallelujah. When it, when it gets silent like that, Brother Devin, you know you in there. <laughs> you know you in there. When it, I mean, when it get real quiet, hallelujah, you know God speaking then. Let's just read the quote. <laughs> he says, well, then if the, wife, if the wife is saying this to you, when she has a right to say it, can we read the quote? <laughs> the wife is saying it because she got a right to say it. All right, say, you better get right. So what the prophet said, you better get right. Because she got a right to say that to you. Amen. Hallelujah. You better get, see, she see things that other people don't see. Glory to God. So she has a right to say, it. you better get right. See, then if she is saying it just to be evil, 
Remember, the Bible said it was better that a millstone was hanged at your neck and drowned in the depths of the sea than even to offend the least of these, my little ones. Now, just that's just your question. Now, and maybe, maybe that this wife is not that type of per person. Maybe she's different. Maybe she's a good per person. Maybe she's just testing you to see what you'll do. I'm reading. It says, now stay in love with her and let her see Jesus in you. You do that. You just go on set. I, I give a little illustration this morning. Now the prophets say stay in love with her and let her see Jesus in you. Come on, somebody. So, so I give a little illustration this morning about a person. One time this little woman had received the Holy Ghost. Now, 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 now remember the question was about the husband. Now the rest of this quote is going to apply to the wife. But what this wife does is exactly what a husband should be doing. Hallelujah. So I, you already know the story, but I'm not going to tell you the story. We're going to read you the story. Amen. But I, I want you to catch that this was an example the prophet was given for a husband. We use this for the wives, but this example was actually for the husband. Oh, <laughs> preach somebody. Because you, you, you ought to yell, preach, brother. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's read it. Let's read it. Let me just, oh, I, I, I like this. I was, at, I was at home and, and just looking at this. I say, Lord, that I preach. <laughs> Woo. Now, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. He says, um, says now, now um, one time this, this, this little woman had received the Holy Ghost, and she was a very sweet little person. Well, she had a hard life, and her husband was an alcoholic. Says, and so she just kept on. She bore with him. He says, you want to go to church, honey? Take off. But, uh, but I, just, I just go down to the saloon, down at the Brown Derby down here. Go on. So they hung out down there all the time. Used to be Boniface. Many of you old timers here remember when Boniface had there on the corner. It's called Brown Derby. I believe it is. So hanging around down there. And the first thing you know, one night come up a question about church and about Christians. One of the old drunks sitting there said, there ain't no such a thing as Christians anymore. Hallelujah. Said, there's no such thing. All this bunch of hypocrites said, you see them out here smoking and drinking, doing the same thing that we do. That's what the sinners are saying. So a Christian should be doing something different than what, amen, the sinners are doing. Hallelujah. Amen. It says, says uh, uh, doing the same thing we do and said, call themselves Christians. There is no such. This is what drunk people was talking about. Says this one drunk raised up and said, just a minute. He said, there's one that I know about. Said, who is it? Said, it's my wife. Said, she becomes salty. He was catching it all the time. He said, I bet if she was put to a squeeze. Oh, Lord. I, I wanted to just ask, if we just put you to a squeeze, how would you react? Would the patience of God come, 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 come flowing out of you, or would you be over impatient if you're put to the squeeze? Come on, somebody. Look at this. He said, he said, no, she's still a Christian. What? Her husband that didn't even want to go to church recognized that his wife was a Christian. I'm going to just leave it there. I'm going to leave it. Y'all already know the rest of the story. I'm going to just, I'm going to tell the rest of y'all this. You can pull it down. So her husband recognized that this is a Christian. And her husband is telling all the drunks, amen, and inside the bar, man, I know my wife a Christian. I, I mean, I don't know about nobody else, but I know my wife a Christian. Say, I tell you what, let's put her to the squeeze. Let's put her to the test. Say, okay, let's, let's do it because I know she's going to still keep her Christianity. So they come up with a scheme. They're going to go back to the house. And uh, they're going to act drunk when they're in the house. And they're going to they're gonna put her through a test and see how she responds, amen, to this test. So when they get back to the house, what they decide to do is, uh, is take, uh, you know, they, they got into the house. The man knew that they had some ham and eggs in the refrigerator. So he tells his wife, say, you know, this is my company. I want you to cook us some eggs and some ham. My. And, uh, and he knew that was there. So, so he knew that, you know, she couldn't say, well, we ain't got that. So she went in. She fixed it. Prepared it very well. And then after she finished uh, 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 preparing it, she comes and she lays it, to, lays it out on the table and gives it to him. And this was their test. 
Oh my. Say they say now 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 we're not gonna eat it. I'm gonna I'm gonna give her a hard test. I'm gonna I'm just tell her I don't like it like this. So as soon as she brought it down, you know I don't like my eggs like this. Why you give me something like that trying to embarrass me in front of my company? Take this away from me. Come on, boys, let's get out of here. Walked away. Now she could have just kind of got upset. I know she, you know she ain't like this this modern day sister. Hello, somebody. The modern day sister that that'll probably give him a piece of his mind in front of his friends. Huh? Glory to God. You know how we do that, right? I'm going to give you a piece of my mind in front of your company. Yeah. Right? So, so here, no, that's not the way she handled it. So she, she went on and she said, she say, honey, if you, I, 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 will, uh, I will actually give you back, you know, I, I'll cook you some more, some more eggs. I know you didn't like it that way, but I'll cook you some more. I'll make it just like you like. She said, he said, you know I ain't like it that way in the first place. Just leave me alone. Just leave, leave us all alone. So, 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 so before you know it, they eased up underneath the window. And they heard after they sent her, after they squeezed her, after they put her through the trial, after they put her through the test, they eased up under the window to see how she was going to react. She was just sniffling a little bit, crying a little bit. Her feelings hurt a little bit. But she was also singing a song, Must Jesus Bear This Cross Alone? And all the world go free. She said, no, there's a cross for everyone, and there's a cross for me. Can I ask you, are you willing to bear your cross? Can you be patient with God enough to bear your cross? Hallelujah. Glory to God. She, she, said, she, said, she was singing that song, and, and, the, and the fellas looked at each other and said, man, you're exactly right. Your wife is a Christian. I didn't think there was no more Christians, but you're right. Your wife is a quick Christian. They came back in and apologized to her, told her what they was doing, and the lady led her husband and them drunks to Christ that night through her example, by her ability to be patient with another. And remember, that story was given to answer a question of a husband that was having problems with his wife. He said, and, and what Brother Branham's answer to that man, amen, at the beginning of that, his answer was say, he says, first he said, you better get right. And then secondly, he says, uh, 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 my, says, stay in love with her and let her see Jesus in you. So when you're having patience one with another, you got to stay in love with her and let her see Jesus in you. Now that's, that's, that's good. I like that. I can just, I can work here all day. Stay in love with her. Stay in love with her. Now you know how you, how it was when you first got married? You would take her out. You found, you found money. You found money. Amen. To take her out with. Glory to God. Some of y'all done had some embarrassing moments trying to go to some expensive restaurant that you didn't have the money to go to. Right? But you found money. You weren't talking about no McDonald's. You weren't talking about no, uh, no, no dollar menu. You weren't talking about none of them things. You found money to treat her like a queen. Now, when you get married, guess what you're going to have to do? Find some money to treat her like a queen if you're going to stay in love with her. Oh, help me somebody. But the prophet said, if you want to see problems go away, if you just do what the prophet told us to do, stay in love with her and let her see Jesus in you. This is a, a war strategy. This is how we overcome the enemy. I got more. I got more. I got more. Let me, let me, just, let me just give y'all this. Get, let me get why are the people so tossed about. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Look at this. Look at this one right here. Says a young fellow. Come to me not long ago. He was a Pentecostal. He's seen too many of these meetings. And he goes in and his wife is a staunch Lutheran. She said, well, I guess you all went down and shouted last night. So she's, 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 she's picking on him, right? Uh, here's another one. That's why you got to know who you're marrying. Praise the Lord. Right? You, you create these problems when you get unequally yoked. Right? So here he is a Pentecostal and his wife is a Lutheran. It's problems in this house. Now, if you're going to overcome these problems, there's some things you're going to have to do. Yeah. Hello, somebody. Yeah. Amen. But when, you, when you've made, amen, these type of uh, uh, commitments, there's things you got to do in order to keep your marriage in the right place. All right. All right. But, but, but those of you that are not married, I advise you find somebody that believes the way you believe. Right. 
Praise the Lord. Don't get unequally yoked. You'll find yourself in a world of trouble. Yeah. All right. Young fellow come to me not long ago. He was a Pentecostal. He's seen too many of these meetings. And he goes in and his wife is a staunch Lutheran. Yeah. That means she ain't changing. Glory to God. She said, well, I guess you all went down and shouted last night. Said, I guess, guess you was, I uh, guess you was all speaking in tongues and doing all this last night. And he, he, he got, he got on the floor and said, God, I cast the devil out of her. Now, this is what the husband did. He was upset with his, with his wife for, for picking at him for what was going on at the church. And he, and he just immediately attacked. God, I cast the devil out of her. Now, look at this. I cast the devil out of her. Almost a divorce, cur a divorce case. Man, a fine man. He come to me and said, Brother Branham, we're, gonna have, we, we're going to have a divorce, I guess. He said, I just can't get that devil to move out of her. I said, brother, you're going at it the wrong way. I said, when she starts like that, say, all right, dear, bless your heart, honey. <laughs> this, is what, this is advice from the prophet. When his wife is, I mean, she intentionally is going in these directions to, to get him all riled up. And when, when, he, when, she, when he recognizes that she's doing that, his response is supposed to be, all right, dear, bless your heart, honey. Amen. Amen. Do we need to practice that or something? <laughs> all right, dear, bless your heart, honey. Come on, brothers. Let's, let's try that on, on three. <laughs> on the count of three. One, two, three. All right, dear. Bless your heart, honey. Amen. Now, you better get in your place. Who are you talking to? You got to know who you talking to, you know. I wear the pants in this house. No, that's not what he said. That's not, he said you're going about it the wrong way. You got to go with a, all right, dear, bless your heart, honey. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Let's keep on reading. I'm going to tell you something. If y'all just get this simple principle on being patient one with another, your whole situation will change. Everything in your household will change. Now, I'm going to tell you why the devil attacks households. If he can defeat a household, he can defeat a church. If he can defeat a household, he can defeat a church. So, so uh, uh, at, at, at first, I mean, the households have got to be intact. Everything's got to be working perfectly. Otherwise, it's going to impact the church. Hallelujah. Look at this. He says, uh, he says brother, uh, uh, you're going, to, going, to, going at it the wrong way. Says, when she starts like that, all right, dear, bless your heart, honey, and be real kind to her. Now, I'm going to tell you, that's, a, that's the hardest time to be kind is when she's acting like that. But he said, be real kind to her. Just see how much you can do for her. This is hard. It's easy, but hard. Because it, it, we're thinking you don't want to do nothing for her. But right now, like he said, be real kind and see how much you can do. What you need? You need this? What you need? What you need? And all, all along, you don't realize, but you're killing that devil with kindness. You killing the devil with kindness because you show him patience. Look at this. He said, Brother Branham, well, how will I ever get the devil out of her? I said, you do as I say and just keep praying in your heart. Now, that's another one. <laughs> it's nuggets all in here. Pray where? That means don't be in your prayer closet. Father, this devil in my wife. God deliver my wife. She, 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 she bound by a devil. Don't use those, that type of language in your prayer closet. Pray that in your heart. In your heart. You say things like that, you just create more of a problem. Come on now. He said, he said just keep praying in your heart. See, I said, God will take care of the rest of it. He called me up about two or three weeks later. What? The situation he'd been fighting for, uh, for, for some time was changed in two or, three, two or three weeks later when he applied what the prophet told him to apply. Amen. You want to see your situation change? Do what the prophet just said do Amen. and watch things change. Yes. All right, dear, bless your heart, honey. <laughs> Woo! Make me want to shout. 
Glory to God. Amen. Now, now when you do that, your wife can say, don't, 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 don't be giving me that. I know where you get that from. <laughs> she do that, say, all right, dear. What can I do for you? <laughs> Brother, it'll, it'll revolutionize everything. Hallelujah. He said, he say, call me up about two or three weeks later and said, my home's revolutionized. He said, my wife is a different person. I said, which is the most powerful? Screaming and kicking and stomping or putting your arms around in love. God is love. God so loved the world. So which is the most powerful? You putting your arm around her in love or screaming and kicking and, 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 and punching holes in the wall and everything else? Which one is most powerful? I love this. I love this. I, I'm telling you, this is a war strategy. Because sometimes be some serious wars that be happening in the houses. Big time war, war zone. <laughs> You walk into that house, it's a war zone. Husband on this side, wife on that side. Praise the Lord. And the only way we're going to overcome these things by applying war strategies. One of your war strategies is patience. Patience with one another. Amen. Patience with one another. Now, if you can't show it at, at, at home, how are you going to show it outside the house? Amen, church. We got to be able to show it at home. Patience with one another. Now, 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 Brother Brandon used the example of, uh, of the brother, you know, doing that with his wife or uh, also in the previous example of the, of the wife doing a particular thing with her husband. We can all take this husband or wife. We can all take this, amen, and use it to overcome the enemy in our situations. Patience with one another. Another thing that the prophet said, and this is another thing that we should always, always remember. And I, won't, I, I don't have time to read all of this. Amen. But he says every seven years, people go through changes. So every seven years, people go through changes. Husband, a man, or a woman. Every seven years, you go through some type of change. And uh, so, so oftentimes, when you're looking at people, maybe some things that they might be going through, try to, try to see if they might be in that cycle of seven. Try to see that, right? So, so you know, uh, 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 you know, 7, 14, 21, 28, uh, 35, 42, 49, right? 56, praise the Lord, uh, 63, 70. Huh? They go through changes. Praise God, I'm preaching. <laughs> They go through changes. So I, I, I might have called one of y'all birth, I mean, your, your, your age out in one of those numbers. But as a, as, a, as, a, as a family member, if you know your family members around that age, watch the change that they might be going through. And Brother Branham said when that happens, that's when you really got to be patient with the person. Understand that that change is going to occur in their life. When they hit a particular age, there's a shift that happens in their just naturally. Yeah. It's a natural shift. Yeah. Oh, my. I mean, there used to be things that I used to be able to do. I'd get on the road and, glory to God, we would drive from here to there and, and, and drive back and not feel nothing. Hallelujah. <laughs> but I hit a change. I hit a change. And when I hit the change, uh -uh, I can't do that. Used to be a time I could drive. I remember we used to drive out to Oklahoma. I mean, 30-hour trip. I would take 25 hours of the 30 hours driving straight through, no problem. Now I'm looking for an airplane. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't even want to go three hours up the road. I, I'm just, I, I hit a change. There was a shift that took place. You get tired just, just thinking about it. <laughs> right? But this is what happens when you, when you hit the shift, you got to understand that. So when you catch people kind of at a shift, then that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a time to show extra patience. Oh, hallelujah. More patience during that time more patience. Oh, my, 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 my. Let me just read a part of this quote. This is out of the indictment. Just a part of this quote. He says, says Edith, because it was talking about Edith Wright. She had gone through this change, and she was going through menopause, and, and she was just thinking so hard of herself during this time. Uh, but Brother Brandon said, well, now, Edith, with this just changing of the seven years, every seven years, your life changes. 
So the seven, the seven times seven, you see, and it makes it kind of hard. And that's a complete change. Seven times seven, he say, is a complete change. So I just hit that. Y'all going to have to be patient with me. <laughs> Glory to God. He says it's a complete change and it bothers the women. Men usually get kind of a funny carrying on during that time and sometimes leave their wives. But women are unfertile, un unfertile after that and we'll go through that and we must remember that it's, it's, it's things that we must bear with one another and understand those things. We must bear with one another and understand those things. So when somebody kind of hits that spot, then you know, just, just be patient with them. Just be patient with them. Glory to God. Let me uh, just give you uh, just a couple more quotes. I'm going to leave that one right there. And I want to just jump into this uh, a little bit. Oh, Lord. Thank you, God. A couple more quotes here. Uh, this one is coming out of how the angel, amen, came to me. How the angel came to me. How the angel came to me. He says, I got a brother that's tall and thin, blonde-headed, pug-nosed, and fair-skinned. He don't look like me. We don't act alike. Uh, you never know he, we was brothers, but his daddy is my daddy. And, and if the family accepted him looking the way he did, accepting me looking the way I did, then we accept one another to be brothers. Say, so that's right. So that's the way we have to do in this Christian realm. We have to believe, have faith in one another. When the Christians lose faith in one another, the devil's got the church right then. When the Christians lose faith with one another, then the devil's got the church right there. That's why you got to fight with everything you got. Soon as you see the devil rise his head to try to bring division in the church, you got to fight that. Hallelujah. You got to be patient with one another. You got to say, no, my brother didn't mean to do that. No, my sister didn't mean to do that. No, that's not their character. You got to fight that devil. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. Glory to God. When Christians lose faith in one another, the devil's got the church right then. That's right. We got to have faith and confidence in one another. Bear with one another. Got to have patience for each other. Got to have patience for each other. Glory to God. Let me give you one more. The church in this condition. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right. It says this. How many here that's backslidden? So though you say I wouldn't admit that, Brother Branham, but look, if the dove of meekness is gone from you, brother, there's something wrong. Can I, can I say that again? If the dove of meekness is gone from you, brother, there's something wrong. That's why we ought to be in prayer all the time. Lord, uh, let your, let, 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 I, want, I want your character be manifested in and through me. If the dove of meekness is gone from you, there's something wrong. But there's something wrong when you can't bear with one another. When you can't forgive every person from the very depths of your heart, no matter what they've done or what they said, if you can't forgive them from the depths, Jesus said, if you don't forgive every man his trespass from your heart, neither does your heavenly Father forgive you. Church, this is so important that we learn, amen, to have patience one with the other. And I'm going to tell you, the greatest trials that you can ever have are the trials that happen right within. Amen. So church, fight that with everything you got. Have patience one with another. Now, I go back here to Statue of a Perfect Man because the prophet makes this, these comments. And let me, uh, I'll, I'll read a, a couple of them here and then I, I'll, I'll switch gears. Glory to God. I love this. Amen. So he says, um, here in a paragraph 277, he says, uh, um, even one time when that rebellion bunch of people had such impatience, they caused Moses to do something wrong. But yet when it come to a showdown, God got sick of their action. He said, separate yourself, Moses. I'll kill the whole bunch of them and start anew. He threw himself in the breach and said, God, don't do it. What? Patience with the people that was rebelling against him. Catch that statement. 
catch that statement. Brother Branham said, Moses had patience with the people that were rebelling against him. Think about it, right? Amen. Sometimes in a church, you can get rebellion going on. But you got to have patience with the people that's rebelling against you. In a household, in a family, kids can grow up and start rebelling, but you got to have patience with the people that's rebelling against you. You go back and look at uh, Moses' situation there in, in Numbers 14, and God was so, so fed up. I mean, I think about 10 different times where the people had, had done something wrong. God got fed up. They tempted God in the wilderness. God said, you know what? I will not let this, this group of people go over to the promised land. Say, Moses, back up. I'm going to kill everybody. Moses said, Lord, if you do that, then the other nation's going to say, uh, you, you brought them out, but you was not able to bring them in. And, and God, you, you did this, but you couldn't do that. The people going to talk about you, Lord. All the other nations going to say these things. Say, Lord, please don't do this. God said, he said, Moses, I, I hear your prayer. Moses stood in the gap for those people that were rebelling against him. Moses, Moses stood there the same way Christ stood in between heaven and earth for our sins. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Moses stood in the, in the gap just the way Christ stood in the gap. And we will be required at times to stand in the gap for somebody that's rebelling against us. Amen, brother. Amen. It's easy to stand in the gap for people that, 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 that's, that's doing everything right. But when they're doing everything wrong, you got to stand in the gap for them. God heard Moses' prayer. God said, okay, Moses, I'll I tell you what. Uh, now, I'm going to tell you this. 20 years and older, they'll go in. But this one that's 20 years and older, I mean, they'll, they'll die right here in the wilderness. Now, they won't go into the promise and they'll die right here. But I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm not going to kill them right now in an instance. I'm going to hear your prayer. Moses stood in the gap for them. Church, we got to do the same thing. Here he was having patience with people that rebelled against him. The prophet says, I wonder if we could do that. If you can't, don't try to build on this. Because it don't, it, it, it don't change you now. That's the way the first one was vulcanized into this. And that's the way every one of them has to be vulcanized. If you don't, don't come to that statue of the dwelling place of the living God. If you haven't got patience, patience one another. All right. Now, I use, amen, uh, the story of Abraham here. Amen. It talked about these, these kings going to war. Glory to God. And, and, uh, and I use Abraham as, as our example of an Old Testament character that had patience with somebody else. We have to have patience one with the other. Amen. And as I just kind of thought about uh, Abraham, uh, the previous chapter kind of talked about uh, Abraham. The scripture says that he was a very wealthy man. And, and when I read that, I, I highlighted it, you know, because if I'm Abraham's seed, I'm supposed to be the same way. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, so you know, I, I looked at that, and, and what had happened was that Abraham, when God called Abraham, he didn't call Lot. He called Abraham alone. Glory to God. But when Abraham brought Lot with him, it created many problems in the camp. And, uh, and the, land, the land was not able to bear both Abraham's group and Lot's group. So, so uh, Abraham finally came to Lot, and he gave him a choice to say, look, the land is not able to bear. We, we constantly str uh, having strife. We constantly fighting with one another. Your herdsmen with my herdsmen. There's constantly something coming up. Say the land is not able to bear. So say I tell you what. Uh, look, just 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 raise your head and look, and you choose which direction you want to go. If you want to stay here, I'll let you stay here. If you want me to go, I'll go. But if you want to go, you can go, and I'll stay here. But we gotta separate in order to stop all this 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 bickering and everything that's going on. We got to stop. Amen. All the confusion, all the fight. And we got, I mean, somebody got to come to a point. Somebody got to be the, the bigger person in the situation and say, look, we got to stop all this. Let's come to some type of agreement. Amen. Abraham was able to do that. Amen. Abraham was able to do that. So, so here, you know, uh, now, 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 you would think that if Abraham is, is, I mean, getting to the point where, look, man, I'm so tired a lot. I'm so tired of all this bickering. I'm so tired of all this fighting that, you know, I just want Lot to leave. I just want him just to get out, just, just, just leave. And, 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 and after Lot left is when God actually told him, now look around, Abraham. Now every, every, and all the land that you see, I bless you with that. That's when he received his inheritance is when Lot left. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's according to the scripture. That's when he received everything God had promised him is actually when Lot left. There's some people God going to have to get out of your life for a season. Hallelujah. Some people are hindering you from getting what you're supposed to have in God because you include them and God never included them. They're not part of the blessing. Hallelujah, somebody. But, but you keep trying to make them part of the blessing. Amen. But, but all the strife was coming up so God could get, get Lot in one place and now he can deal specifically with Abraham. But now you think that Abraham is free in his, in his heart, free in his spirit, that man, I finally got rid of Lot. I finally got rid of Lot. Oh, hallelujah. I thank God that Abraham didn't have that type of spirit in him. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. We should never have that type of spirit. Oh, oh, they gone. Good. What? You got the wrong spirit when you're doing something like that. They gone good. No, if your heart not crying out and praying for somebody that's not here, something's wrong with you. Hallelujah. But, but here, 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 Abraham, you know, uh, he's here doing whatever he's doing and Lot is over there. And Abraham gets word that there was a war that occurred, a battle that happened. These kings come down and, and took all the, the people out of Sodom and Gomorrah, and he knew Lot was living down there in Sodom. Hallelujah. And here, here uh, 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 when, when, when he hears about, you know, Lot was taken captive, Abraham not being a warrior, Abraham not really having any warriors in his camp. He just got trained servants, 300 trained servants. But he's about to go after five kings because his brother is, is captured. I want y'all to get that. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The, re, the, the thing that brought, the, the thing that, that caused Abraham to want to do something about this is because his brother, not the one that was causing a headache. Oh, y'all didn't get it. Not, not the one that was causing him problems. Amen. To Abraham, he's not a problem maker. He's my brother. Oh, church. I hope that sinks in. He's, he's not a one that's causing me problems. He's my brother. She's not causing me issues. She's my sister. And if she gets in trouble, I'm going to be right there to get her out. Hallelujah. The same one that was causing Abraham all the trouble was the first one he went after when he found out that he was in trouble. He wasn't sitting around saying that's good for him. God going to teach him a lesson. It's about time this happened to him. No, that's not the attitude of Abraham. Get the trained servants together and let's go after five kings. I want you to see this in scripture. Abraham goes there in, in Genesis 14, and, and, and let's, let's look at this, because, you know, great things happen. When, I mean, when your spirit is right, <laughs> and you're doing things the way God wants you to do it, you might meet somebody that you wasn't expecting to meet. You might come in contact with, with somebody that you never expected to have contact with. Huh? But, but when your spirit is right, these, the supernatural can take place. Look at this now. Because let's pick it up, amen, in, in Genesis 14, verse 13. And there came one that had escaped and told Abram, the Hebrew, for he dwelt in the plain of Mamre, the Amorite, brother of Eskol, and brother of uh, Aner. And these were confederate with Abram. And when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, notice he uses the term brother. Not, 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 not the one that's caused me all these issues, but my brother. Right? Amen. Uh, his brother was taken captive. He armed his trained servants, born in his own house, 318, and pursued them unto Dan. And he divided himself against them, and he and his servants by night, and smote them and pursued them unto Hobah, uh, which is on the left hand of Damascus. And he brought back all the goods and also brought again his brother Lot and his goods and the women also and the people. Now it goes on. And the king of Sodom went out to meet him after his return from the slaughter of uh, uh, Chedorlaomer and of the kings that were with him at the valley of Shava, which is the king's dale, and Melchizedek. This, this, is, this is this unexpected king. 
He, was, he wasn't mentioned before, but because Abraham's spirit was right, because Abraham did what was right, he met Melchizedek. Look at this. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, was brought for, uh, 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 king of Salem brought forth bread and wine. This is communion. Oh, hallelujah. You want to know why some people can't take communion? It's because they got problems, amen, that they haven't been able to work out at home. Glory to God. But if you can actually get some of that and have peace with one another, have patience with one another, if you can learn how to work those things out, then you'll be free to take communion. Yeah. Hallelujah. When, when, when Abraham had patience with Lot, he met Melchizedek and was served communion. Oh, Jesus. Look at this. He says, and Melchizedek, king of Salem, broke forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. The other thing I, I want you to know about this is that after the battle is over, you will receive communion. You know, when we get to the other side, the first thing that happens when we go to heaven is communion. Yes. Communion happens. The first thing you do in heaven is have communion. The last thing Jesus did on the earth was do what? Have communion. When the battle is over, you will be served communion. When this battle in life is over, you'll be served communion. So if you're going to have it then, why not start having it right now? If you got to get something fixed, get it fixed. So you can start partaking in communion. Look at this. He says, the priests are the most high God. And he blessed him. And said, blessed be Abraham, uh, blessed be Abram of the most high God, possessor of heaven and earth. Now this Melchizedek, Brother Branham tells us, he, I mean, actually Paul said he was a man without father and without mother. A man without father and without mother. And the Brother Branham said, now this was not Jesus. Melchizedek was not Jesus because Jesus, a man, had a father. God was his father, right? And, 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 and by, by earthly standards, Mary would have been cons considered his surrogate mother, right? He say Jesus also died. He rose again. But this man was without father and was without mother. No beginning of days and no ending of days. He say this was God himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Abraham, because he had the right spirit, because he had patience with one another, patience with his brother Lot, he met God himself. If you ever want to see God come down in your situation, if you ever want to see God come in your circumstance, let's have patience one with another. Your household will change. The church will change. Everything will change when we can learn to have patience one with the other. Not talking fast and snippy and quick. That's not, that's not Christianity. That's how the world do things. But we got to learn to have patience one with the other. Abraham had, he had patience with Lot, his brother. By having patience, he met Melchizedek. Let's go, let's go on and read a little bit further in this. Look at this. Verse 19, and he blessed him. And blessed be Abraham the, uh, uh, of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be the Most High God, which hath delivered thine enemies into thy hand. And when Abraham, when Abram met Melchizedek, this king, he gave, he gave him tithes of all. So he gave him a tenth of the spoil. Everything that he, he, he got back in this battle, Abraham said, I'm giving, I'm giving a tenth of this to Melchizedek. He says in the king, so, so tithing has been since Genesis. And it's still here today. God requires us to do that, tithing and offering. He says, and the king of Sodom said unto Abram, give me the persons and take the goods to thyself. Now, he's trying to, he's trying to give uh, Abraham this, uh, you know, all the stuff that you captured. You can have all that yourself. Just give me the people. Now, Abraham responds, said, Abraham said to the king of Sodom, I have lift up my hand unto the Lord, the most high God, the possessor of heaven and earth that I will not take from a thread even to a shoe latchet, and that I will not take anything that is thine, lest thou shouldest say, I have made Abram rich. What Brother Brandon would say, see, all wars are fought with a principle. All battles are fought with a principle. And in Abraham's case, his principle was, I'm not going to battle to get money. I'm going to battle to get my brother. And by having the right attitude, by having the right approach, then he could meet Melchizedek. And Melchizedek would bless say, you are a possessor of heaven and earth. 
Glory to God. Right. I mean, you pretty much you are, you you rule in, in, in both realms, Abraham, you rule, you rule in the heavens and you're ruling on earth. Abraham possessor of heaven and earth. Hallelujah. You don't need nothing. The devil got to offer you when you know you the possessor of heaven and earth. You don't have to take no shortcuts with the enemy. He said, no, no, I don't need nothing. I only, 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 only what the, 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 the verse, verse 24 says, save only that which the young men have eaten and the portion of the men which, which, which went with me, Aner, Esco, and Mamre, let them take their portion. But the rest of it you can have. I don't want this because I, I don't want you to think that you blessed me. Oh, my God. Sometimes we forget who doing the blessing. Oh, it's glory to God. You know, we, we think that, you know, well, I can, I can give this because, you know, because I can. I, no, no, it's not you. God actually blessed you so you could do what you did. You understand? It's God all alone. So learn, learn to give him the glory and give, give him the honor. Don't exalt yourself. Let God exalt you. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Abraham met Melchizedek. He met Melchizedek when he was able to have patience for his brother. Glory to God. Look at this. I want to read a couple of quotes here. This is out of the message, uh, Hebrews chapter 7. My ah, patience with one another. He, this was a war strategy. Abraham had patience with Lot and he went out after him. Now, I want to tell you something. Even after he rescued Lot, you want to know what Lot did? Lot went right back to Sodom. Right back to Sodom. Now, he already got him out one time. But you know what? When Abraham, when it was revealed to Abraham by God himself that I'm going down to destroy Sodom myself, Abraham began to pray and intercede for Lot. Abraham threw himself in the gap for Lot. He never asked for Lot specifically. He just asked for 10 souls. Hoping Lot would be counted in those 10 souls. Lot and his family. Oh, my. That's patience. Even somebody rebelling against you, you can still have patience. Church is hard, but this is what God is calling us to. Now, this is not something for us just to talk about. This is something for us to demonstrate. Let me, let me read this quote. Hebrews chapter 7, part 1. The prophet says this. Now, if you notice, Abraham said, I'll not take, a, take, take from a thread to shoe latch. He didn't fight the war to make a lot of money. And real true battles, it says real true, uh, uh, real true battles are not made with selfish motives. Wars are not fought for money. That's paragraph 75, I believe. Yeah, just go right, right on down to paragraph 75. I'm sorry. Uh, it says uh, uh, real true battles are not, not made with selfish motives. He says wars are not fought for money. Wars are fought for motives, for principles. Men fight war for principles. And when Abraham went out to get Lot, he didn't go out because he knew he could whip the kings and take all their possessions. He went out for the principle of saving his brother. I want to tell you, when you're having patience one with another, the principle is that you're going to save your brother. You're going to save your sister. And any minister... That sent out under the inspiration of the king of heaven will not go for money. Neither will he go to make big churches. Neither will he go to inspire denominations. I like that statement. So you can be called to the ministry. But if you're using your ministry to actually try to get bigger than a denomination, you got to question your call. Can I say that again? You can be called to the ministry. But if you are using your ministry to try to inspire a denomination, something is wrong with your call. You know the only reason I'm going to go into the denominational church to preach? I'm going for my brother. I know everybody in that church ain't going to come out, but I'm going for one. Where is Lot in the midst of this group? Right, I want to bring him out. Hallelujah. Amen. There's somebody down there that might not have heard truth. So I'm looking for that predestinated seed. I'm not here for everybody else. So I don't get tangled up in that. But, but some get, get so wrapped up, they're trying to inspire in the denomination. Hallelujah. Trust me, my friend, you can't compete. 
you can't compete with the, the, the denomination of preachers. The one thing I'll tell you about, 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 about a message church, they're going to come with a different angle. So they're going to bring angles that they, they ain't seen before. But when it comes to entertaining, you can't touch it. This is a gospel that does not entertain. Hallelujah. That we don't practice grabbing our ears and trying to hum and all. No, we just want to get the truth to people. The Bible say you make the, you, they, they'll know the truth and the truth will make them free. So I'm ever going to denominational church to preach, which I have been invited to many. And anytime I go to preach, I'm there for one purpose, to bring my fallen brother. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let's go on a little further. He says, uh, any minister that's sent, sent out under the inspiration of the king of heaven will not go for money, neither will he go to make, a, make big churches, neither will he go to inspire denominations. He will only go for one principle, and, and th that is to bring back his fallen brother. Whether he gets a dime in the offering or whether he doesn't, it won't make a bit of difference to him. And I say real wars are fought and waged for principles and not money. And let me, you know, let me just tell you another thing, because sometimes you, know, you, you, you go to churches, you get invited, you go preach. And I remember this happened to us. We went to a church and preached, and, and man, we, we, you know, we had a good time. And, and I saw the, the, the minister do something. He told the church after I, after I preached, he said, let's raise an offering for this minister. Didn't he do a wonderful job tonight? Let's raise an offering for him. And he raised an raised a offering, and I, and I saw the church just putting in their money, you know, saints from our church. Just, I'm just looking at them putting in their money. I think they put more in that offering than they, praise the Lord, I'm just messing with you. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. But, uh, but, but, but I saw him do it. And after, after I saw him do it, I went to the back room. Now, this preacher just told everybody out there that we're taking an offering for the man that just preached. And when I get to the back room, he said, what I owe you? <laughs> you want to know what I said? Nothing. You don't owe me nothing. You sure? No, you don't owe me nothing. You can, use, you can have that. You can use it for your church. You, there's no problem. You can use it. You don't owe me nothing. So guess what happened when he invited me back the next time? I did not go. <laughs> Amen. I'm not going to let the people be taken advantage of. Glory to God. Right? Amen. So you got to be able to kind of, you know, navigate some of this. But I, I won't let my church be taken advantage of like that. Glory to God. What I owe you, what you told him. <laughs> let me keep on reading. As I say, real wars are fought and waged for principles and not for money. And men and women who join church and come into church to be popular because, jo because the Joneses belong there or they change their church from a little church to a big church, you're doing it for a selfish motive and the right principle is not behind it. You should be willing to stand at the battle front. I'm going on. I got some more to read. In this tabernacle here, when things go wrong, and you men and you women will run and go over somewhere else or lay out. What that mean? What that layout means? Stay home. Don't come to church. Have to have people call and see where you at. You laying out. Before you know it, you're on the beach on Sunday. Right? You, you just laying out. Glory to God. You say laying out, laying out till the little fuss or the stew is over. I've seen people do that. And when they start laying out, they actually don't make it back. That's why you just stay, hang in there, stay with it, be patient one with the other. It says, lay out to the little fusses of fuss of stewards over, there's something wrong with your experience. Right? We have a custom here. We have an order here. The church has an order. Y'all understand that, right? There's an order here. The church is based upon the principles of the Bible. Oh, I love this. Amen. 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 I, I'm just, I'm all of, there's a, the church has an order. These brothers not just sitting in these chairs and on these posts just to be standing there. They have an order. You know, amen. If they, they, if they direct you to a seat, that's the seat you're supposed to go to. You don't fuss and fight with them. I, they, they, they're there for a purpose. We have a deacon in the church. He's the policeman of the church. He, he's the one that sets an order in the church. Amen. You don't raise up against the deacon. No, you humble yourself down. The, the, the deacon said, well, okay, all right, praise the Lord. And it, it's his job as a, not only his job, you voted him in. <laughs> you voted him in. He's your deacon, right? So your deacon has a responsibility. My God, my God, my God. 
Oh, Jesus, don't get me going in these places, Lord. Uh, somebody called me to, is Brother Troy the only one? I said, yeah, he's our deacon. And that's, that's his job. Amen. So, you know, when Brother Troy has to approach people, people might feel like uh, he don't love me. No, he loved you and he loved God too. Amen. He's just trying to keep the thing right. And as the deacon, he's the only one with that responsibility. Nobody else should be trying to correct nobody. Hello? It's either going to come from the deacon or from the pastor. Can I, uh, can I say that again? It's either going to come from the deacon or the pastor. Nobody else should be doing that. That's not your job. Everybody got to stay in their lane. There's an order to this. There's an order to it. The church will run smooth. Is everybody doing what they're supposed to do? Is that all right? All right, all right, all right. I'm talking about having patience one with another. Amen. Glory to God. Hey, 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 man. <laughs> all right, I'm, I'm, I'm still reading. We have a custom here. We have an order here. This church is based upon the principles of the Bible. If there is somebody here not doing right and you think they're not, you go to him and talk to him. If you can't reconcile him, then take some brother with you, one or two more. If he won't be reconciled then, then tell it to the church and the church will dismiss him, have no more fellowship with him. And Jesus said, whatever you loose on earth, I'll loose in heaven. That's the reason you have so much troubles because you don't follow the Bible principles. If somebody in the church is causing a disturbance or something wrong, it's not your duty to go talk about that man or that woman. It's your duty to go to that man or woman and tell him his error. And if he won't hear you, take some other one with you. He won't hear that. Then the church looses him. Jesus said, what you loose on earth, I'll loose in heaven. What you bind on earth, I'll bind in heaven. That's the power of the church. Now, 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 don't get the prophet wrong just because you go to him and then you take somebody else to him and then you either come to me or you come to Brother Troy and say, this is what we did. Now, just loose him. I, I had somebody actually tell me when to just put people out of the church. I said, I don't, I, don't, I don't know if I ever read that in Scripture where Jesus got rid Well, if they don't show love the way that the Bible show love, you just kick them out of the church. I said, what about Judas? What about Judas? He was there all the way to, uh, to, to feet washing. He was there in the church. So he'll leave on his own. You ain't got to kick him out. So he, and, and I, just, I, just, I just want to stay in your lane. The, the pastor know what he's doing. God lead the pastor. I ain't kicking nobody out. Now, uh, nah, 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 nah. we won't tolerate sin. Here you running through the church doing all kinds of stuff. No, 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 no. If you, you can't get control over that, there will be something dealt. Right? Amen. We won't tolerate sin. Not here. I can tell you this much. I, I, I don't know why. I'm just all over. I got, I got more to read. I'm not, I'm not done yet. I got a few more things I want to read. But, but, but I want to just tell you, for 17 years, God has blessed this church to keep sin out. We have done things where we have not had a bad name associated with us for 17 years. Now, I want to tell this especially to the next generation. You all better raise the bar higher. Y'all better raise the bar higher in order to keep the devil out. We didn't do things to put ourselves in position for the devil to get in. Hallelujah. Right? We didn't make decisions or plans where the devil might get in. Hallelujah. I always got my eye on the devil. Right? Hey Amen. You know, uh, you know, I was just, I just, you know, just, just things that happen. Uh, look, how do I say this? You know, uh, I, I'm a married man. Praise the Lord. And uh, when I go places uh, and I'm hanging out, it's one thing to have my family stand with me. But it's another thing to have every, all the other saints stand with me. It's another thing to let other sisters and other brothers. That is an opportunity for the devil to get in. Now, it might not happen immediately, but a seed can be sown. Oh, hallelujah. Don't tell me about it. I've I seen it happen. People tipping at night to the bathroom. 
You knocked out sleep, just, 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 you know, you Z, count Z's. And the person next to you done tipped out. You ain't never even feel them get up. This is how we keep the devil out. We, I mean, a lot of stuff, I be saying no to, I got a reason. I might not explain it to everybody, but I know, to keep, I know how to keep the devil out. For 17 years, he has not been able to get any victory. But that's why I thank God for a deacon. Because I'm just telling y'all, I'm letting y'all listen. We got an order here. So if Brother Troy come to you about something, he coming on my behalf. He coming on my behalf and God's behalf. So as a, with a, and any other deacons that we would have in this church, that's, just, that's what I'm expecting. I'm looking for deacons that's going to keep sin out. Not somebody allowing sin to get in. Well, you know, Brother Jack, he old. He don't know no better. Praise the Lord. I'm just letting you know right now. I've been able to keep, we've been able to keep sin out by the grace of God all these years with no, 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 no funny stuff attached. Some churches go through all kind of crazy things. And now, I, 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 and I know as a church, we going through some stuff. We going through some stuff. We're going to make it through. Amen. We're going to make it through. Praise the Lord. God going to give us wisdom. We're going to get right through it. Amen. We're going to get right through it. But sin is not welcome here. Sin is not welcome here. And, and, and Brother Bram said, I want to be in a church where sin cannot hide. We, we don't glorify sin either. I want you to read between the lines. We do not glorify sin. Wrong is wrong and right is right. So some folk might be upset with me, but you, uh, you're going to have to get over it. I ain't glorifying sin. Man, you just put your category in there. If it's sin, it won't be glorified. Understand? All right. That way, you, you know, everybody clear. <laughs> Hallelujah. You got to do things right if you want God to bless it. All right. Amen. Now, I, I could go deeper, but I'm, I'm trusting you reading between the lines. If you can't read between the lines, don't worry. I got an office. I can talk to you about it. But I don't glorify sin. Amen. Amen. I had to tell that to a brother recently. Uh-uh. I can't come. I don't glorify sin. I'm going to keep reading. I told you, I don't know why I'm all over the place like this today, but I'm a... <laughs> God knows, God knows what needs to be said. We have patience with each other. All right, th there's just two more things that I want to read here. And, um, uh, oh my, yes, let's see here. Okay, this is out of the message, uh, who is this Melchizedek? Again, talking about Melchizedek. I'm going to paragraph 95 uh, in this and then the last uh, quote that I will read, amen, today is going to be standing in the gap. So uh, who is this Melchizedek? He says, now the true revelation of Melchizedek comes into view. What? He was God. The Word. He was God, the Word, before he became flesh. I'm at paragraph 95. It says uh, he, was, he was God, the Word, before he became flesh. What? He, uh, um... God the Word, because uh, he had to be. No one else could be Im immortal like him. See, I had father and mother. You did too. Jesus had father and mother. But this man had no father or had no mother. Jesus had a time he started. This man didn't. Jesus gave his life. This man couldn't because he was life. And it's the self-same man all the time. I hope God reveals it to you. The self-same person all the time. Notice his title, King of Righteousness. Now, Hebrews 7 2, King of Righteousness and King of Peace, he is two kings. Now, watch Hebrews 7 2, King of Righteousness, also the King of Peace. He is two kings there. Now, since he has come in the flesh and received his body up in Revelation 21 16, he is called the King of Kings. He is all three of them together. See, King God. King Theophany, King Jesus. He is the King of Kings. It's all met just like soul, body, and spirit all comes to make one. Also, he is the Father, which was the first, Son, 
and the and Holy Ghost, the Spirit, King of Righteousness, the Spirit attribute, Theophany, King of Peace, Theophany, and in flesh, he was King of Kings, same person. So Brother Branham is just trying to get us to see uh, Melchizedek that, that Abraham met. Amen. After he fought the battle with the right principles, having patience with uh, with uh, uh, his brother Lot, uh, Abraham met Melchizedek, which was God in the flesh. I want to tell you something. We can have patience one with the other. We'll meet God. Amen. In our midst, we will see God in our midst. Melchizedek, which was God himself that came down and served communion to Abraham. This last quote that I want to read standing in the gap. Very, very important, a man thought here. Moses stood in the gap for the people that rebelled against him. Abraham stood in the gap for people that rebelled against him. Jesus stood in the gap for people that rebelled against him. We'll also be asked to stand in the gap for people that rebel against us. Here, he says, now here in Louisville, Kentucky, not long ago, a minister was talking and there was a young lady, she waited a, 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 she waited a little long in life to be married. Now, I want y'all to look at this quote with the prophet say. She waited a little long in life to be married, somewhere around 25, 30 years old. <laughs> Hallelujah. It says, and she was fine, staunch Christian girl. And there was a certain man in Louisville that wasn't. That means he wasn't a Christian. He hadn't lived such a good life. He had run to dances and road houses and so forth. But one day he found a pardon for his sin and he become a real Christian, real staunch Christian. About a year later, he fell in love with this young lady and the young lady madly fell in love with him and they were married. And after they lived together, a man, after they lived together, about two years, they said, uh, they said that this young lady said to her husband one day said, dear, I suppose that's kind of hard for you. Just a new Christian said, I've been a Christian since a little girl, but said for you, a young Christian to have to stand all the wiles and temptations that goes with it after you've sinned so long. He said, well, it does become a battle. He said, confessing this to his wife. It does become a battle. She said, I want you to remember one thing. That if the enemy does upset you somewhere and you fall and you go back into sin, don't stay away from home. See, she's having patience with, with her husband. She realizes that she's been a Christian for years and now he's just new to this walk and he might be struggling some time and the devil might trip you up, but, but don't stay away from home. Hallelujah. The devil might come after and get you here and get you there. But whatever you do, don't don't stay away from home. Come always come back home. Look, he says, he, she says, she says, I want you to come on home. Said you're going to find at home the same wife that you married. Glory to God. He says, and I'll help you to pray back and pray through and get back to God again. Can we have that kind of patience with one another? Right. I'll help you to pray back and pray through and get back to God again. Said. I don't want you to stay away. Said, look, I married you upon the basis not of what you were, but I married you because I loved you. And, and, he, and she said, no matter what you do, I still love you. I married you because I love you. Boy, I tell you, if, if, if our marriages can get to that spot, I married you because I loved you, not because of what you could bring to the table. Hmm? I mean, I, 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 I mean, you know, I, I got to looking at some things. I saw you had this and you had that. And you can bring some things to the table. What if they lose them things? Yeah. Oh, you were, you were cut, you're built, you know, hey man, what, what's that? Uh, 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 you know, they used to have the old saying, um, you know, you give the dimensions for the woman and all this kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, and, and you know, she had certain certain dimensions. I married her for them dimensions. Well, dimensions will change. <laughs> Are you still gonna be in love? Well, I would love you if you just lose some of that weight. And look at you. <laughs> See, that's not having patience one with the other. No, it's I love you no matter what. Amen. I, I, it don't matter. I, I love you. I love you. I, I, I married you because I loved you. 
not because of benefits. I married you because I loved you. If your marriage is not built on that foundation, it won't last. I'm going to finish this. This, 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 this. this wife that's having patience with her husband. If you, if you make a mistake, don't stay out there. Come back home. I'm going to be right here. You're going to find the same wife that, you, that was here all along. Think about this. The next paragraph says, And the man that day went to work and was heard repeating it in the place where he was working. So now he's telling people what his wife told him. Not taking advantage of it. But he's touched by what she said. He said, now how could a man do anything wrong against some, something like that when a woman that loves him so much that no matter what he did was willing to come back and take him again, take him again and try it again? See, it shows. Now you multiply that by a billion and then you have some idea what the love of God is. See, that when a man falls in love with Jesus Christ, the things of the world, when you think of what he did for you in light of the scripture, not in the light of some emotion, but in the light of facts, what it is, then there's something happens in you. When the new birth comes, the sin is dead at mid, is dead as midnight. When as long as the light is in you, how can darkness shine? It cannot do it. That's what God did to one man who throwed himself in the gap that could take the promise and Moses being a type of this anatype, that's why Moses stood in the gap for the people. Hallelujah. Moses could stand in the gap for people that were rebelling against him. And when we're having patience one with the other, we're going to have to have, amen, we're going to have to stand in the gap for people that might be rebelling against us. That's what he's calling us to. Patience with each other. Patience with each other each other. Don't allow the devil to get in the midst of this group. God is doing some mighty things in our midst, but don't you let the devil come in. Amen. Have patience with each other. Always think the best about your brother, your sister. Always think the best. I'm going to tell you, some of y'all going to need to open up your house for dinner to invite somebody to your house that maybe you feel a little something towards. Go out your way now. Open up your house. Say, I want to invite you to dinner. And, and let me tell you something. When you have dinner, don't sit there and talk about what you feel. Just talk about the Lord. The reason I'm inviting you because, you know, I've been having this feeling. I got to get this up. No, just you die to that. You die to that. Just lay it aside. Don't even bring it up. Well, I wasn't going to go there, but since you know, die to it, don't bring it up. Amen. Amen. Now, I want this to be the first of many of our dinners together. Praise the Lord, somebody. <laughs> if you can't invite them to dinner, take them out to dinner. Amen. Glory to God. But let's, let's, amen, let's, let's love one another more than we ever loved before. Don't let the devil have any space here. Amen, church. Is that all right? Patience one with each other. Let's pray. Father God, we just thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, that you would challenge our hearts. We want to be like Jesus. We want to live like Jesus. We want to walk and talk like Jesus. The only way, God, that we could do things like that is to apply your word. It may, it may um, skin us down real good. It may hurt sometimes. But, Lord, this is what you have called us to as, as, as a people. And God, we're willing to lay ourselves on the altar, Father, and just die to the things, Lord, that are not like you and just try to express you in all that we do. Don't let this just be another message, but, oh God, let it be something that is applied, something that is manifested, something, Lord, that is lived. 
your prophet said, oh, what Jeffersonville needs is thousands of live voices thundering out in sweetness and humility. And that's not just Jeffersonville, but right here in West Palm Beach, we need live voices thundering out in sweetness and humility. God, I just pray that you would help us, Lord, to rise and to accept the challenge uh, that the Spirit brings to us in this hour. We yield to you, God. We yield ourselves. We yield our thoughts. We yield our ideas. We yield our mind. We yield it all to you, Jesus. And I pray, oh God, that you would be glorified in us. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. How many just love the Lord Jesus? Amen. I think that's a very appropriate song that Sister Rebecca chose to play. seen the devil come at different times and attack different ways and sometimes we we even confess out our mouth this ain't nothing but the devil we actually know it's the devil but we still give him victory uh, this is something that we can't allow anymore we just you know when we see it's the devil let's fight with everything we got so no 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 Satan I'm not gonna let you get into victory in this I want to encourage you if there's anything that you need to make right, then do that. Just make it right with your brother, with your sister. But uh, there are some things that you can just let go of and not even worry about anymore. And I want to encourage you to do that too. We want to. We want a church where sin can't hide. We want a church where the love of God abides. Amen. Where His love abides. And, and different people have different ideas of what God's love is all about. You know. But um, but really, you know, it. Um, it's about measuring up to his word. That's what it's really all about. That's what we come to do, to measure up to his word. This song says, I need you, you need me. We're all a part of God's body. So stand with me, agree with me. Let's stand and sing this. survive. I can't make it without you, my brother. I can't make it without you, my sister. Mm. Say, I need you. You need me. We're all a part of God's body. Stand with me. Agree.
alive I won't harm you With words from my mouth I love you I need you to survive Say I pray for you And you pray for me I love you I need you to survive I won't harm you Words from my mouth I love you I need you to I pray for you I pray you pray for me One more time, say, I pray, you pray, I love you, I need you, yes, hey, oh, I won't harm you with words from my mouth, I love you, I need you, it is his will, every need, be supplied. Come on, give God a hand of praise in this place. Oh, glory. Amen. Now, Brother Kwaku, would you come and just have the closing word of prayer? And while he's coming, just turn and tell your neighbor, I need you to survive. I need you to survive. your heart honey <laughs> right. Okay. Right. so let's keep it that love your brother your spouse your sister even your enemy with the love of God amen if you need to project it with godly love do that if you need to project it with godly love do that if you need to project with uh, affectionate love for your wife or your husband your children do that it will bless you all the days of your love of your life shall we pray heavenly father we thank you for this blessed hour what oracles of God you poured upon our hearts, Lord. Filled our hearts with overflowing love. Father, sometimes your love is corrective, and that is what we need, Lord. We thank you. Them that you love, you correct, and you trim us, Lord, to be where you want us to be. To be the stature of a perfect man, of a perfect woman. Thank you, Lord, for all that you poured through, Brother Jack, for us, Lord. Bless him, Father. Minister to his strength, his body, Lord, his mind, his spirit. Father, give him more, Lord God, next time when we meet, to give us more, Lord. Father, bless his family, his loved ones, Lord. We pray each and every one of us into your hands, Lord. As we go, may the word keep, Lord, bubbling in our hearts, Lord, bringing it into our remembrance, to put it in application, not just a sermon, but, Lord, to become practical applications in our life, that the love of Christ will be seen in and out among us as brothers and sisters and even outside in our workplaces on the streets wherever we go people will see the love of christ in us we thank you bless each and everyone answer the needs of your people heal the sick set the captive free lord let everyone go rejoicing lord let families lord father be transformed through this sermon lord let lives be changed through this powerful sermon from your presence 
let Father destinies be transformed, Lord, from this word that came from the mouth of the living God. Father, we love you. We thank you for giving us this, Lord. We appreciate you, Lord. We don't just take it as a sermon, but as a word coming from the Almighty God. Thank you for Brother Jack, Lord, a gift given to the church, Lord, a pastor who is giving himself selflessly for the word of the Lord to serve your people, Lord God. Bless him, Lord Father. He's also a man. He has a need, Father. Answer every need of his heart, his family, his loved ones, Lord. Bless him, the Lord. His joy will overflow in you. We thank you as we go out. May your presence go with us. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. God bless you.